Yep. Uh, before we move into chapter eight here, um, I just want to go ahead and say this in ending here on, on uh, this uh, chapter seven. You know, our approach to evangelism is, um, you know, it's never to put a burden. You know, number one, we shouldn't feel a burden to to be a witness. You know, I was saying we have the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Uh, that are for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Well, what are we equipping the saints to do? To be fishers of men also, you know, um, wash, rinse, repeat, like I said on Sunday, that, and then disciple people. But we're not getting, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I just want to say this, our approach at Destiny Church is that we want to be spirit-led even in our witnessing um, and that we don't want to make it a works program. However, uh, we also have to understand that if left um, without any sort of conversation or us encouraging the body in evangelism and witnessing to people, the flesh in itself or your body in itself, if you had to just yield to yourself all the time to be a witness, you know, eight, well, I'd say seven out of 10 times, you, you may not want to go and witness just because you don't feel like it or, you know, um, uh, but, but, um, that's why we're bringing it up. So while we don't want to be legalistic with it, at the same time, we want to encourage you that, um, you know, pray, spend time with the Lord and uh, get, you know, check your heart because we should desire um, to share the good news of the gospel. You're carrying something magnificent that transformed your life. You should want to do it. And I know a lot of the biggest hurdle is fear. Um, and that is what we want to overcome the most in, in sharing, you know, and then also understanding that you're part of the process. You're either watering or sowing seed. God brings the increase. But it's important that we play a part of either watering or, or, or sowing seed. And sometimes we're going to reap that harvest. And that's nothing. there's nothing more joyful than having the privilege of leading somebody to the Lord that's saying, yes, I, I need to pray with you. Pray with me right now. So I just want to encourage you with it. That's why we're bringing it up to encourage your heart um, not to become too comfortable and push away being obedient to the Holy Spirit when He's speaking to you. Um, so we want to encourage you and push you and thrust you forward into that. So praise God. Let's move into chapter 8, which is talking about sharing your testimony. Um, and I like that. You know, uh, it starts out by saying everybody preaches. And by the way, this is on page 67. I don't know where you are on the PDF, but uh, on page 67, it says everybody preaches or sharing your testimony is actually preaching in a sense, if you understand what the word preaching means. Um, and, and Webster defines the word preaching as to proclaim publicly. In other words, to, to be in a public place and proclaim. Um, you're sharing the good news of the gospel. Uh, number one, it can also mean to deliver a sermon. Um, and then number three, to urge acceptance or abandonment of an idea of a course of action. You're preaching about something. You're wanting to make people aware of a condition and that you have a solution for that. You're preaching about it because you're passionate about it. And so, um, you know, we're all preaching. You know, I like what it says. I'm not going to read the whole paragraph there. It says, you know, some people will preach about a great movie. You know, many of us, if you enjoyed something, I know you've, you know, I preach the gospel. I love preaching the gospel. Um, but one thing I also <laughs> enjoy preaching about is if I've gone to a good restaurant or I've had dinner at somebody's home and the food was magnificent, well, I'm going to tell somebody about it because I enjoy to do that. Well, that's preaching. I'm telling people the good news about a great meal that I have. So anyway, uh, in, in next, moving along, it says, Jesus told his disciples, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's Mark 16, 15. So we are all commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In other words, to every person. You may never stand behind a pulpit, but you have something to proclaim. You've been saved from something. Some people feel like they don't have a testimony to share because, oh, they've been good their whole life. Well, guess what? Everybody that you're preaching to or witnessing to, they might not have had a drug addicted life. They might have been good just like you, except you were in the wisdom of God. God managed to reach your heart and win you over. 
and they might they might have been you know I'm the good person I haven't done anything wrong well you might be able to be able to identify and connect with them more than the person that's come out of a crazy amazing testimony of drug addiction but anyway um so you may never stand behind the pulpit, but you have something to proclaim. Your experience of how you were born again is better than any movie Hollywood has ever pr uh, produced. You know, you don't have to sit and memorize. Well, how does my testimony go again? And it's something personal to you. And um, so in this lesson, uh, what we're going to be talking about is what makes your testimony such a powerful tool. Uh, let's look at Paul. Um, when he testifies before King Agrippa. And uh, just to go through here, just to give you a backdrop, Paul, um, he's he's spent two years in bonds by the order of Felix, governor of Caesarea, and he actually appeals to them to go to Caesar. And uh, in moving forward here, Festus, needing something in writing to present to Augustus, asks King Agrippa, uh, if if would join him in examining Paul, that he might assist in writing up the charges against him. So, so Paul's trying to. He's 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 been wrongfully accused of something, and he's trying to go. It's just like uh, you know, in the natural, uh, a certain somebody right now that's running for president is being wrongfully accused. Um, and indicted for a bunch of nonsense. And so the, Supre the state Supreme Court justices, the, S the state court uh, 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 justices are trying to go against, but, you know, he's now appealing and it's going to end up going to the SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States. So Paul's doing the same thing. He's trying to appeal to Caesar, the most powerful person in the land. And on his way there, um, here in Acts chapter 26, 19 through 23, it says, Therefore, King Agrippa... I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout the region of Judea, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God and do works befitting repentance. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. Therefore, having obtained help from God on this day, I stand witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come, that Christ would suffer, um, that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim life to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. And as King Agrippa actually is sitting to him, um, he's listening to Paul. And you can almost see that Paul... Paul has got the attention of Agrippa and his heart is almost fully persuaded. In fact, he actually, uh, Paul, Agrippa says to him, Paul, you almost persuade me. You almost persuade me um, to become a Christian, to get saved. And uh, those are perhaps some of the saddest words found in Scripture. And, uh, you know, to be able to get to the end but not step on over, of course, um, uh, uh, you know, then it says, yeah, it's not about you. Before we go any further, it is of utmost importance to recognize that we cannot save anybody. So take the pressure off of yourself. I can't save anybody. All right. Uh, when it comes to soul winning, there's nothing you can do to make a pe person receive Christ. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the soul winner by soul, uh, Charles Spurgeon says, it's not our way of putting, uh, putting the gospel, nor our method of illustrating it, which wins souls. But the gospel itself does the work in the hands of the Holy Ghost. So it's not about you. The gospel in itself carries the power for the Holy Spirit to breathe upon to work in the hearts of men. And I think this is such a powerful part here for us who are being t uh, witnesses. Uh, to understand that revelation, we the pressure is not on us. The pressure is on the word. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's not how well you can articulate it, um, even though it's great to hear something that's very clear. You know, when somebody is ready and the gospel is there, the power of God is breathed upon that gospel and God will do the work. The Holy Spirit breathing upon that word. So the good news is, don't put the pressure on yourself. All you have to do is be a, a vessel in the hands of God that he can use and let the Holy Spirit do the work. Um, what is a testimony? Uh, the, the Greek word is maturia. Um, and if we carry on down that paragraph there, it says a person confirms 
and events authenticity by the words of their testimony. The testimony is a witness and the authenticity of an event that took place in your own life. That becomes your personal testimony. Um, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. John, uh, 1 John 4, 14, uh, it is that which causes something to be believed or received as truth. You know, I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but I do want to go ahead and say this. Your testimony is your most powerful tool because, you know, usually the arguments come in is when we begin to debate theology, when we begin to debate things like that, you know, which is usually indicative that not always, but most of the time is indicative that the person's not ready. They just want to argue for the sake of arguing. Um, and so, the, but yet you can argue theology. One thing a person cannot take away from you, they cannot argue your personal encounter, your personal experience of how God came and encountered you. That is the power of your testimony. Uh, 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 so go ahead if you want I, to say something. Yeah, I like how he says a testimony is not limited to words alone. So how we, and again, when when we say this, this is not about works or um your, you know, our righteousness as this filthy rags, but how we live our daily lives really does matter because it's a testimony to the world, how we respond in heated situations, how we respond at work when there's stress, how we respond to our spouses. It's a testimony of the condition of our hearts. And so, you know, I'm learning in, in my own life, there's certain situations that I deal with and I have to check my heart. Okay, did I respond that right way? What was my testimony? What am I testifying? Am I testifying in anger? Am I testifying in irritation? Am I testifying um, lack of patience? Or am I testifying love? Love is patient, kind. You know, the whole uh, First Corinthians chapter 13, you know what love is. What does your life testify of? And I think that's important because we're supposed to be a fragrance among many. So if we're, re- if we're responding... You know, like it, to the gossip chatter at work, well, yeah, that boss is a real jerk. And we respond, yeah, the same way. Or are we being kind to our leaders? Are we reaping, you know, coals upon their head with kindness and love? You know, it's it makes a difference. You know, like I gave the example um, last week of the Christians that went into the restaurant and instead of complaining about the service, they helped with the service. You know, instead of complaining about the server, asking if they could pray for the server, it looks like you're having a bad day. You know, those type of things. What is our, so to me, a testimony is not just how did you get saved, but how do you live your life, you know, in the day to day, a testimony, you know, because like he mentioned, some of you might have lived a life like myself, all in church, you don't have any, um, you never did any drugs and all these things. But my testimony can be on how God brought me through a tough situation. My testimony can be how he how I'm, he's helping me deal with my kids, how he's helping me deal with other believers. My testimony can be so much more than just how I got saved, um, how I went through a certain situation in a battle, how God brought me through sickness or how God brought me through these trials, how God brought me out of poverty. Those are testimonies of the goodness of God. Amen. So don't, don't think that it just has to be on how you got saved. That's very important. And that's very crucial that he saved you. Um, but even more so, how are you living life in that more abundantly? How did you overcome depression? How did you um, overcome a divorce? How did you overcome a sickness? All these things, and by the word of God, you know, it's by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. So our lives in itself are a testimony just by how we live and how we respond and how we react. You know, um, the Holy Spirit always reminds me, don't don't react, because I can you know, my personal fleshly nature is, you know, some people think I'm confrontational. Well, well, more of it is, is I'm not going to let something fly by the side. I'm going to, we're going to talk about it. We're going to direct it. But I've had to learn, you can't let your emotions roll on your sleeves. As believers, we're not to be quick to the draw, quick to the cuff. We're to quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger. And so, You know, I just want to challenge you and it challenges me and myself. Am I quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger? What is my testimony in that? 
because that might not even be words, but your behavior, the look on your face. You know, like we talked before, fix your face. You coming in every day all angry and depressed and discouraged, you know, are, are you full of the joy of the Lord? You know, all those things matter and testifies of Jesus. Um, when we move on, it says, what does it mean to share your testimony? It simply say to tell G and that's part of telling Jesus how you came to faith and how he's changed your life. So you might not have this big, huge um, thing, how he set you free and from drugs and alcohol or whatever the case may be, but you can talk about how he's changed your life. That even though you thought you were such a good person and you didn't do any of those things, that didn't matter because you still were in need of a savior. And this is how he has changed and touched your life. You want to go? Praise God. So, so, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of believers uh, have shared their testimony inside of a church building. Um, and obviously that's okay. You know, there's room for that. There's no negative side on that. Um, in fact, it's good practice, you know, and, uh, the encouraging, you know, we always want to encourage to take, uh, that confidence that you're building inside the building in a safe space to be able to develop the confidence, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God, to allow the Spirit inside of you to to just to, to build up yourself up in, 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 in your faith, to be able to take that to the streets, take it to the marketplace, take it to where the harvest is. The harvest is not inside the church building, it's outside the church building. Now, obviously, we do events that cater towards the harvest. And uh, yeah, then you can share your testimony inside of a church building, which would still count as sharing your your the, the love of Jesus and, and the gospel, the good news of the gospel outside of that. So, um, you know, I think the major point that we're saying is that, you know, we've been saved from so much, we can't hold back and we cannot just be quiet about so great a salvation. You know, we must um, develop... A, a a spiritual muscle inside of us and and uh, and fan into flame the desire to share Jesus wherever we go in every environment and uh you know no matter how small those steps are start somewhere you'll hear me say that time and time again um so why share your testimony the bottom of page 68. Uh, we've quoted the scripture several times since we've been on evangelism. Why share your testimony? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of salvation to all that believe. It is the power of God unto salvation. And so yes. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. What is that gospel? The good news. Good news. Jesus died on the cross for you. Good news. You know, he he um, he wants you to become a part of the family of God. Good news. He wants you to become a child of God so that you can spend all of eternity in his family. He planned for all of this from the beginning of time. That's the good news. And so um, when we share our testimony, which is the good news of what the, uh, the Lord, uh, it's the good news of what the Lord has done in our lives on a personal level. That's what a testimony is. It's about the goodness of God and what he's done for us on a personal level. Again here, when we go into the second paragraph, which I'm going to let you read some of these, stuff, uh, most of these paragraphs on page um, uh, 69, but I'm just going to point two things out in the second paragraph. It says, people can argue with theology. And then a couple of lines down, it says, but they cannot argue with or what they cannot argue with is your personal encounter with the living God. And that is where theology doesn't become part of the debate any longer. Listen, this God of the Bible that we can argue about theologically, we can argue about all of that. But this God, I've encountered him and this is what he's done for me. And uh, again, your job is to tell and share how good he's been to you and trust the Holy Spirit to do the process. If you end up leading that person to the Lord, phenomenal. But it's going to leave that person with an imprint. There is no, let me just say this to every one of you here. I want this to be embedded in your spirit, in your mind. There is absolutely no ways that whoever you are sharing the gospel with, being motivated by the love of the Father, 
and you're not getting into all of these debates, but you're sharing your heart on how God is good, that w- person walks away having maybe rejected you. I'm still going to let you know this. There is no possible way that the seed of God's word is going to do something that they are going to have to war with and wrestle with until they either say yes or no. But it will not leave them because God loves them too much. And the only way that they continue to push it aside is by rejecting God time and time again. But just to know that you are a part of depositing a spiritual seed that contains eternal power in the life of that person is just mind blowing. You are a part of that process. And man, I think that's so extraordinary. So I love um, what he says here. He said, um, the next person you see, I'm at way at the bottom, right above effectively sharing your testimony. He said, the next person you see, ask them that they've ever seen an authentic miracle. Whether they say yes or no, say you are a walking miracle. And then you can share with them. Part of how to, to do that is if you're not sure, you know, you want, you want to make sure you've got it in about five minutes. If you're sharing like how you got saved, how God, maybe you have a special way of what God's done in your life. He's healed you from cancer. He took you out of anger. Um, he took you out of poverty. Um, he's healed your heart. He's healed your body. So whatever aspect of your testimony um, or what he's brought you out of, write it out. And it should be, it, you should be able to share it in less than five minutes, you know. Um, now, you might be able to speak li- longer at a different time, but you want to make sure it's about in five minutes. And that's another way of, of you know, that's something you can pass out to somebody um, you know, I've heard of people when they do like when, when Becca does her homeless project and they have all the little gift bags for the homeless, they'll put you, you know, we put letters in them. Sometimes that can be your testimony. You know, when you're going out um, on outreach, you can always, you know, we've talked about before, Pastor Melissa said, you can write stuff out. You can maybe God, maybe God, maybe God gives you a word and you write that out and it can be your testimony or it could be a certain word. And when you're at outreach, you know just what person to give it to. Amen. You know, so you can prepare ahead of time for things like that with outreach by having your um, testimony written out to, to give to people. You know, you can, you know, maybe put it in, in force or something so that you're not having a full sheet of paper or whatever, um, but that's easier to hand out in smaller form. But it's just a great tool because, again, they can argue theology till in the face, but they can't tell you what your experience has been or hasn't been. And some of you I've seen at a personal level, I've seen transformation. I've seen you transform before our eyes with the testimony of of God's goodness and what he's doing in your lives. And others will notice that too. They'll notice that visible. That's your testimony. That's part of your testimony, what God's done. Amen. Write that out. Testify of his goodness. Testify of what he's done. That's a great witnessing tool. I just want to say, you know, obviously Dr. Leon here in in the manual says, keep it to five minutes. I couldn't agree with that more. You know, um, I usually will tell you this. Uh, you know, if you were an elevator leading somebody to Jesus, you were on the first floor, they were up on the 10th floor. Um, you've got up until the 10th floor to share your story. What are you going to tell that person going up 10 floors? So it's your elevator pitch, your elevator testimony, and call that your five-minute testimony. So practice that. Write that out. Uh, be Be wary of people's time as well, you know. Um, you know, uh, just be conscious of, of, you know, people have body language. So read people. Uh, some people are in a rush. So, so just, just, you know, say what you need to say, highlight it, pray that the Holy, and as the, as you're doing that, the Holy Spirit's going to anoint you. So in your testimony, remember to always glorify Jesus. Don't take 90% of your testimony to talk about how the devil almost took you out. And then in the last five seconds, but Jesus saved me. Um, talk more about the power of God and what you were delivered from. Spend more time on talking about the glorious power of what Jesus saved you from. Share the part that of, of how you were, but don't put more emphasis on how bad you were. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's part of your testimony, but then take equal amount of time to talk about how good God was and what he did, how he saved you, what happened to you, uh, how your life changed, what happened with your friends and family, every single point about how God came and flooded your life with his goodness. So, um, and when you're glorifying Jesus, guess what happens? The Bible says here in John 12, 32, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself or, you know, so unto me. So lifting up Jesus is what draws men. 
Talk about how wonderful Jesus is and what he has done in your life. Again, we're going back to this. Don't use Christianese. All right. You know, when you're talking to somebody that's never heard the gospel, never heard anything like, well, before I got saved, well, what did you get saved from? Of course, they might ask that question or uh, I knew I needed to be born again. They don't know what born again means. Uh, or when I was in the world. You just say things like before I met God, before before Jesus came in. Before Jesus. My life, before I met Jesus. Or I used to be a carnal Christian. They have no clue. What do you mean carnal Christian? So just assume they are a newborn baby that's just come out of their mother's womb and you have to speak to them in a language that a baby can understand. I think that's a really good think, way to put it. I think a big you know? thing to realize too is, you know, we live in a huge, highly um, Catholic area that a lot of them are praying to Mary and all the saints. And, um, you know, I re if you look back to, you know, before Martin Luther came out and no one knew that they could read the Bible, some people are going to be blown away. Like they can actually talk to God themselves. They can actually experience God themselves. And Jesus is that way to God. Some of it is just such a simple gospel, but giving them that good news, you can you can have a relationship with God. You can go directly to him. Come on. You don't have to go to a priest. You know, so there's some basic, and it's not about knocking their religion or tearing down their religion, but I just, I, I looked, but the thought that came to me was back um, when Luther came out and just gave the truth of, hey, guess what? You can read your Bible. It was such an astonishing thing for people. And so some people still don't even realize that. They're still bound by their Catholic Bible or their religion that they don't even realize that they themselves can have a relationship with God. They can confess to God. They can speak to God and he wants to change and touch their lives and have a relationship with them. Right. That is, it's not about how often they go to mass or confess to a pre priest. It's about giving their lives to a God that loves them and cares for them. Right. Um, so, you know, some of that, you know, like even like the, when we use those Christianese terms, nobody's going to have a clue what they're saying. But if you get to know the person and know where they're coming from, like the Catholics of the area, you know, you know, you know how to speak directly to them. The next part, I'll let you read through that. We kind of talked about this. Um, don't be so overly dramatic. Um, whether you were an ex addict or never did drugs in your life, don't compare your testimony to somebody else. Your testimony is your testimony. Just anyone that hasn't, had God bring them out of a uh, situation like that, your testimony can be like how God, you know, in fact, I had a I had a prophetic word um, growing up. A, a woman named Clarice Fluitt prophesied over me, and she said, I, I've um, kept you in a greenhouse, and I've kept the bugs off of you. And that was God's um, confirmation to me that I was spared from that. Does that mean I'm better than those that had to go through those things? No, but that's a testimony of God's goodness in my life that I was kept from those things. He kept the bugs off me. He kept me in that greenhouse. And so make your testimony yours. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Amen. So here it says, uh, let others see your joy. You know, as we uh, in the previous lesson, the best salesperson is a, sa a satisfied customer. You know, not that we're selling Jesus, but we are living in a day when few people have a smile on their face. Make sure there's one on yours. You know, people will be attracted to a smile on your face. In this world that we're living in right now, so many people are full of anxiety, fear, worry. A smile on your face will make a big difference. What, what do you have that you're smiling about, you know? And then ask the Lord for opportunities to share your testimony. I don't even have to read the paragraph there. Ask the Lord to provide you with opportunities and he'll make a way. Be flexible. It gets easier. You know, with your testimony, don't be so rigid and so robotic. Every time you testify and you use your testimony, it might be a little bit different. God might have you share a little piece of it here and there. Um, and, and it might be a little bit different. It's all your testimony, but God's going to lead you. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. And guess what? You may be nervous a few the first few times uh, when you share somebody your testimony outside of the church, but God's going to put a confidence on the inside of you, and you're going to develop a joy to share the goodness of God with other people. So, um, amen. Praise God. Let's just pray, and then so, we'll, we'll, we'll pray, and then we'll stop the recording. Hallelujah. And then if you have questions, we'll Thank you for we'll being answer. on here with us tonight, though. Yes. We love you all.
We appreciate you guys and your time. We value your time. And Father, we just thank you for those that are watching tonight, Lord God, and those that are listening later. We just thank you, Father, that you grant them boldness.